The example that I'm going to use is the matrix that we have seen before. My matrix is going to be 3, 1, 0, 2. All right. Now, that's just the A, but I'm taking the determinant of, of A minus lambda I. So if I want to look at what A minus lambda I is, now, I is the identity matrix. It's zero almost everywhere except for that main diagonal. And then along that main diagonal, it's just going to be all ones. If I multiply it by lambda, it's going to be all lambdas. So in other words, this is going to look like the A matrix, 3, 0, 1, 2. And then I subtract off lambda, 0, 0, lambda. We don't even usually write down this intermediate step. We just go right for our goal, which is 3 minus lambda, 0, 1, 2 minus lambda. So there we go. We have that matrix. So in other words, if I want to come along here and compute the determinant, the thing I'm computing the determinant of is this matrix, this 3 minus lambda, 0, 1, 2 minus lambda. And I know how to take a determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix. It's just going to be the main diagonal minus the off diagonal. So this is going to give me 3 minus lambda times 2 minus lambda. And then the off diagonal is 0 times 1, so I don't even subtract anything in the subtraction of the off diagonal. And what we are asserting here is that this determinant is equal to 0. And I've chosen a nice simple example where that means that there's only two different possible roots to this equation. It means that my lambda is equal to 2, or it means that my lambda is equal to 3. This equation that we have down here, by the way, where we've taken the determinant of a minus lambda and we've set it equal to 0, this is often referred to as the characteristic equation. So I'm halfway there. I figured out my eigenvalues. I have two of them, lambda equal to 2 and lambda equal to 3. Now I want to figure out how do I get eigenvectors. So let's go back to our original equation, namely the a minus the lambda i times the vector x is equal to 0. This was one of the forms we'd seen previously before we input the determinant component. And the determinant component was great for getting us the eigenvalues, but we wanted to use one of this previous steps to get the eigenvectors. Okay, so let's just plug in one of these values. How about we choose lambda equal to 2 first? For no special reason, I'm just going to put it in, and let's fire it into there. So what do we get? I get that 3 minus 2, notice that this is the matrix that I'm doing right over here. There's my matrix. So I'm putting in 3 minus 2, 0, 1, 2 minus 2, and then I'm setting x is equal to 0, and if we wished we could compute out this, this is going to be 1, 0, 1, 0, multiplied by the vector x, I want that equal to 0. Now this is just an easy 2 by 2 system, I can try to figure out what all the different possible solutions are to them, and I'm just going to do it by inspection. I'm going to note that my vector x is going to be any multiple of the vector 0, 1. So some particular s and then the vector 0, 1. If you wish, you could reduce the matrix and you could see that this was going to work, or you could just multiply by the 0, 1 and, and notice it has the property that it's going to be equal to 0. Indeed, we mentioned before that for every eigenvalue, there's actually infinitely many different eigenvectors. It's somewhat customary here to only refer to the so-called standard one, the, the one that just clearly comes out if you're going to go and do your Gaussian elimination. And even though every scalar multiple of it that's non-zero is qualifying as an eigenvector, we usually just use 0, 1. And so I will say something like this. I'll say that 0, 1 is an eigenvector that corresponds to the specific eigenvalue of lambda equal to 2. Now, you'll recall that what we had done in here was chosen lambda equal to 2, and we said what eigenvectors correspond to lambda equal to 2.
but let's repeat exactly the same computation, but this time for the other eigenvector, either eigenvalue rather, lambda equal to three. All right, so if I'm going to do this, I'm going to have the equation three minus three, zero, one, two minus one, all of that times x is equal to zero. So that was just taking lambda equal to three and plugging it into our formula. In other words, I'm gonna have a zero, zero, one, minus one, times the vector x is equal to the zero vector. And if you want to go through the full process of trying to solve this homogeneous system of equations, you can do that. It's usually easy enough to go by inspection and note that, hey, the vector one, one works. So I'll take vector x and I'm going to say that this is equal to one, one, or any scalar multiple s of it. And so we're gonna again assert that one, one, is an eigenvector, but this time it's for the value of lambda equal to three. And I've chosen the canonical one, although of course any non-zero stretching of it would work as well. So if I go back and, and look at the entire process here, there were two major phases. Step one was using the determinant to figure out what the eigenvalues were. And then phase two, it was coming along here and figuring out corresponding eigenvectors by plugging each of the different eigenvalues into this formula. Now, I want to note that these results match the geometric results that we've seen previously. Indeed, this was what we'd previously seen in the previous video, and we'd seen that the, the basis vector, the E2, the, the zero one, that it's stretched by a multiple of two, and that the one one was gonna stretch out by a multiple of three. This is exactly what we just computed algebraically, that we have these two eigenvalues, the two and the three, so a stretching by two and a stretching by three, and that the stretching by two occurs in the, the line that's going straight up, that's going through the vector zero one, and that the stretching by three occurs along the line that goes through one one. And so our algebraic and our geometric intuitions have lined up, which is always wonderful to have.